Hey everybody, this is Brian Gardner, Developer Advocate at WP Engine. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to take the default sites header pattern that comes in the Frost WordPress theme and take it and make it something very special. We're gonna do some various layouts and I'm gonna show you how to extend it beyond just the site title and the navigation blocks that come with it, leveraging the other blocks that we can use, such as the site logo, social icons, and even a call to action button. Let's dig in. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our first header here. And what we're looking at on screen is the Frost WordPress theme installed on a fresh blank uh, WordPress install using local. It's our local development tool uh, that we have here at WP Engine helps you test and uh, build websites locally. And so what we're looking at is out of the box, we've just installed fresh WordPress with the fresh uh, version of Frost, no changes whatsoever. And so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to do a little modification here uh, with the navigation. We're going to add a call to action button inside of that. And then we're going to go after that, we're going to go ahead and add a site logo here to Frost just to make this a little bit better. So as you can see, I'm going to go into the WordPress dashboard uh, and I'm going to go under appearance and editor. This allows me to edit the site. I'm going to click on patterns. I'm gonna scroll down here to template parts and we're gonna do header. This way we can click on the header and then go in and do what we need to. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a call to action button here. And so I've got the navigation block you can see down here at the bottom selected. And on the right hand side, there's a plus button which allows you to add a block inside of the navigation. I'll explain why that's important in just a few minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, add block and I wanna add a button. So by default, it's gonna pull in the button block, add it to the navigation so it's all one piece. Uh, and I'm just gonna say call to action just to make this simple. And what I'll do is go ahead and hit save. We'll take a look at the front end to see what this looks like and then make some edits from there. So we go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now we see that we've got this call to action button which is styled the same as the buttons on the site. Now, maybe you don't want uh, this to be as big. There's too much padding. Uh, maybe you want to adjust the uh, font size of the links as well because this all feels just a little bit too big. You want to make your header a little bit more subdued. Uh, and maybe for whatever reason, uh, there's a spacing in between all of this that's just too much. Maybe you've got more than five links or they're longer in text and you need to make that uh, a little bit more compact. And so what I'm going to do is go into, again, I've got the navigation block. I'm going to change the block app. And so by default, WordPress adds what's called block app, which is sort of preset spacing. In the Frost WordPress theme, it's 30 pixels by default. So it adds 30 pixels of spacing in between all of these components. And so with the navigation block selected, if I come over here to styles, you can see block spacing is an option. Now watch as I slide this back and forth, you can see what happens uh, to the menu. So this sets it down to zero. Uh, this makes it much bigger. Of course, we don't want that. And so maybe uh, using the t-shirt sizing, each one of these steps in Frost uh, is 20 pixels. And so if we go um, from the default down to extra small, we're gonna have 20 pixels of uh, spacing in between them. Uh, so we've done that. And uh, again, so we're on the button here. Maybe we want to uh, make the padding a little bit smaller, top and bottom, left and right. And so we can go in here and do uh, some adjustments. And so maybe we wanna do something like this. And then last but not least, these links look a little too big font size. Uh, so I've got this selected. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change that to extra small. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save and we can see what that looks like. There we go. Much better. Feels like it fits better. And then lastly, in this particular header layout, we're going to add uh, the frost icon here to the text. And so this will require a, a couple of steps. And so uh, I'm going to go back in here. I am inside of the row, which houses everything in here. I'm going to kind of click in the middle and just uh, grab the plus button. And what I want to do is add the site logo. And so what it'll allow me to do uh, is look into my secret files, uh, SVG, site logo, and I'm going to select that. Obviously, this is going to be way too big. So uh, maybe we want to make this 60, maybe that's even too big. So 40 pixels in width. Now you can see what happens right now. Uh, I'm going to select the row again. The uh, By default, 
this uh, justification takes all of the elements inside of the header and just kind of spaces them out. And so what we need to do is a little bit of grouping. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open list view here and we can see, uh, I'm gonna take the site title and the site logo and I'm gonna multi-select them. You can see they're both selected. And if I use the three little uh, dots, I can do this, what's called a group. And so I'm gonna group them uh, with a regular group that then stacks them top to bottom. So over here on the right hand side, uh, I have the ability to transform that group into a row and watch what happens when I click uh, the middle button. Then it puts them back into the row variation. Now, obviously, uh, I want the logo to go on the left so I can select it. I can move this to the left. And again, in between these two blocks inside of this row is block app. So if I select the row block and then come over here to styles, once again, under block spacing, I have the ability to adjust this. And so uh, maybe, uh, maybe I wanna just keep this together. And so I'm gonna go 10 pixels. Uh, last but not least, uh, I want to uppercase this. This feels a little bit too sort of out of um, out of sync here. So if I select the site title, I can come over here to typography. I can come um, to letter case, and then I can do uppercase. That feels a little bit better. Uh, in fact, I might actually make this logo a little bit different in size to make this feel like a better look. So if I go ahead and hit save, and then refresh the front and now you can see I've got my site icon, which can also be used to be set as the favicon. You can see up here in the tab, uh, I've got this group together and then we've got this nicely. Now I had mentioned earlier why it's nice. The uh, call to action button can be part of this navigation block. And the reason behind that is it groups it all in one thing. So if I were to kind of pull this tab out and you can see, I'm gonna shrink this down so we can sort of emulate like a mobile experience and watch what happens with the menu. Because it's part of it, you can keep the call to action sort of in this modal. Uh, whereas if you have the button out of the navigation as its own block, um, it doesn't sit nicely inside of this display. And so uh, that is why, um, and this was a recent change, maybe a, one or two versions of WordPress ago, uh, they added the ability to do a couple of blocks. Uh, I believe the search block is another example of something that could be added to the navigation. Uh, so once again, we'll just go back in. We've created a really, really cool um, header. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear customization so that I can prep this for the next uh, layout we're going to do. But while I do that, we can uh, go back and see if you go here and cl do clear customizations. You can watch on screen what happens. It kind of resets everything back. Uh, and this call to action... Uh, I'm just gonna manually delete because it was added and saved to the um, remove buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I go back to the front end and then we can see what happens when I refresh, it goes back to the default header, which is not as appealing as the one we just built. And so that's the first layout and we are going to kick off uh, the second layoff here. Okay, we've got our blank install here again, reset the header customizations that we had done. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna do uh, a little bit a different layout. It's more of like a three column approach. Uh, what we're gonna do is take this menu, we're gonna center it in the middle of the header. And then on the right hand side, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add some social icons. And so uh, again, I will go back into the WordPress site editor. I'm gonna click on patterns. I'm gonna scroll down to template parts and click on header. And then we're gonna go ahead and edit them. Uh, I'm just gonna arbitrarily just grab this and add the social icons block here in the center. Um, let's just say we wanna start with the, we'll call it the Twitter, give it a fake link so that it exists. Uh, we'll maybe do three, uh, Instagram would be like another one. Gonna just add the fake link. And then we'll go ahead and add LinkedIn because every smart WordPress builder freelancer or user should have a LinkedIn account. And I think that's what we'll do. We'll just use these three for now. Uh, and so the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna open list view as I often do, just so I can see what I'm working with. Uh, we've got a row which houses all the elements inside of the header, the site title, the icons, the navigation. Uh, first thing we wanna do is take these icons uh, and you can see, I'm gonna move them to the right 
uh, just to get them where I want them to be. Uh, and similar to last time, I'm going to take this navigation block and I'm going to reduce the block spacing on it just to keep it a little more concise. And then uh, let's do uh, let's do the upper casing here again. Uh, typography, we are on the site title block. Uh, we're going to do a letter case and we're just going to uppercase it just to kind of give it a little bit of a, um, a look. And then with the social icons block, there are many ways you can customize the way this looks. So if you selected that block and then come over here to styles, uh, you can see uh, there are different ways you can uh, outline is using uh, icon color. You can set that, for instance, uh, to that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, not do that. We're just going to use the default. I'm going to unset the icon color. And uh, maybe yeah, these feel too big. And so if you go to size, you can make them smaller. And I want them all one color, even though uh, the colors are pretty. I'm going to go ahead to icon background, and I'm just going to do this. And this will make them all the same color. So what I'm going to do is save this, and we can see what things look like on the front end. Uh, so we're, we're sort of already there. Now there's one catch here that I want to um, point out, something that's very important. Uh, and so uh, to demonstrate what I'm talking about is, so we're on the row block here and we have space in between items. Now the problem is what that does is it just takes auto width of each of the elements and then just spaces them out. Uh, the problem here is that because of the fact that this site title up here and these icons, though they visually look close, um, they're different widths, which essentially means this menu is not centered perfectly. So for instance, uh, if you had, and I'll just go ahead and do this so I can demonstrate the point. We're going to add a couple of more uh, icons just to show what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll add one more. Let's just say YouTube because everybody should have a YouTube channel as well. And so as I hit save, watch what happens to this menu as a couple more items get added here. You'll see this, this menu slide over. See how that slides over? Now you can tell very clearly, this is about the middle of the screen. And so we need to fix that. And first thing I'm gonna do is reduce the spacing here because that looks like those icons are too far apart. Uh, and so, um, well, let's do, let's do five pixels. And so do a quick refresh. Those will bunch together. And so here's what we're gonna do. So we are um, on the icons block. And if we cl click on this fixed uh, setting, we can specify what we want that to end up being. I'm just gonna pick a round number. I'm gonna pick 200 pixels. It's probably gonna be too much. Uh, and so uh, as I save this, you'll see what happens. This moves over because we don't have an alignment. I'm gonna right click and inspect so we can see exactly what's going on here. So we can see here, uh, I said, hey, let's make this block 200 pixels wide. Well, if we take the icons that are there and adjust them to the right, in other words, align them to the right, uh, which we are able to do here, justify items to the right. Uh, as, I, as I hover that, you can still also see that 200 pixels. And so what that'll do is it takes the icons and slides them to the right. Now, we also need to take the site title block and do the same thing. We wanna add 200 pixels. And in this case, we don't have to do any alignment just because um, I'll come over here and you can see that is 200 pixels. So what we've done here is we've given both uh, the site title and the social icons the same width, this 200 pixels. Uh, and as I can do, we'll do one of these things. So there's 200 pixels and then there's 200 pixels. You can kind of pick whatever you want based on what's in there. What that does is it gives both of those uh, blocks the same width, which then means uh, because of the math, the menu in the middle of the two will actually be centered because it's being centered between the same amount of content on the left side and the right side. And so uh, giving these two, uh, that's a better view of it. As I hover this, you can see now uh, that that middle section, the light blue, is centered perfectly because of the fact that we've defined widths of um, both outsides, uh, the outside blocks. And so this is a, another way to do a really cool layout. And so we've got the site title, we've got the navigation menu, and we've got social icons. And that's the second layout for the header. 
and we will get started here. I'm going to clear out uh, customizations as I did before, and we're just going to clear this out. And we'll refresh our screen. We'll start back at square one, and we'll get started here in a second with the next one. Okay, so this third header layout is going to just be a little bit more basic than the ones we've already done, but this is just to sort of demonstrate how to do a little bit of a design thing inside of a header and how to do that with blocks. And so as we look back at the front end here, this is the standard default uh, frost theme, frost header. Um, I'm going to go ahead and to start, I'm going to do like, we're going to go for like a minimal kind of a really interesting uh, look here. So uh, go into the appearance, the site editor. I'm going to go ahead and make my text changes first. So I'm going to click on patterns. I'm going to click on header. Okay, so I'm going to take this page list here and I'm going to change the size there. The default size is a little bit bigger than we want. So we're going to make them smaller. We're going to make these links really small. Um, so we'll, we'll use 14. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to also go over here to the site title and I'm going to oops, uh, go to letter case. We're going to uppercase that. Uh, and maybe even make this a little bit smaller too. So as I save this, you can see what we're going to look at. Uh, this looks already minimal and sleek, and I kind of like the way this looks. Uh, and all we're going to do here is add a little bit of a black line after the, the site title just to give it an interesting look. And so what I'll do here uh, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this site title into a group because I'm going to put something with it in the same way we did the site logo in the first layout. So I'm gonna just group this off the bat. Uh, we're gonna change this to a row so the elements inside there can be um, next to one another. And then I'm gonna put in a separator. So see what happens here by default. Um, the uh, And I think it's maybe 80 or 100 pixels. Uh, this separator uh, is kind of like an interesting visual thing. And so why we put them in a group is so that they can get pushed together. Uh, and kept in uh, next to one another. And really all we need to do is adjust the um, the black spacing. So maybe that seems like too much even. So if we just do 10 and then go ahead and hit save, uh, we've just done a little bit of an interesting look here with the uppercase, the smaller fonts, uh, the visual sort of design of this thing. And then, you know, maybe last but not least, maybe we want to make one of these uh, sort of a, a call to action. And so what we'll do is go into the navigation block. Uh, and so we want to go ahead and um, add a button. Similarly, uh, this is probably something that we will uh, have to customize. We'll just say contact me. And obviously this is way out of scale. So we'll go ahead and um, change the dimensions of things. Uh, the padding is going to be, oops, we're being covered there. <laughs> uh, so something like this maybe. Um, and uh, the Frost theme has what's called a style variation for buttons. And so we don't want this, this feels kind of bold and we want to go with the minimalist look. So we're going to go ahead and hit outline. And what that does is it creates an outline uh, version of the button. And you can see here there's a border radius uh, out of uh, default and so uh, we can come down here and we can hit zero and then it'll square these off uh, and then if I go ahead and hit save uh, we've done just a little bit of uh, that and so again maybe this this text is too um, too big for the button since we reduce the text uh, we can go ahead and I think oh, maybe on the button level <laughs> Oops, there we go. See, there. So we go to on the button level and we hit save and that looks a whole lot better and more in line with that minimalist look. Uh, so again, nothing really uh, amazing about these header layouts. They're all unique in their own sense and uh, most websites have different uh, uses. Some don't have call to actions, other want social media icons. Some insist on having logos. Uh, and so this is just three easy ways to customize a header. And of course, you can change background colors if you need to make it like dark. Uh, you can very easily do that as well. Uh, you can make all of the font and the buttons white if you need to, to sort of do the inverse look. Uh, that's pretty easy to do as well through the site editor. Uh, but, but for all intents and purposes, three easy layouts 
using WordPress blocks to customize your website header. So I wanna thank you for watching this video tutorial. I invite you to either leave a comment or hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube page uh, as well, and uh, get served plenty more great tutorials around how to use modern WordPress, the Frost theme, uh, and our local development tool. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.